Welcome to the Fast Track Shelter Guide. My settings are normal with increased raids and large map, but these tips can be used for any setting. For character selection, you want one fighter, so violent, which gives high dexterity and strength, with courageous trait that allows them to hit more. Second character finds things, so street smart with high perception, and hands-on trait for building stuff in the shelter. The traits are all that matters for the kids. Girl gets resourceful and that helps in saving materials when deconstructing. Boy gets hands-on for building. He'll be building almost everything in the shelter. The kids should stay in the shelter. I choose the horse. It's the most useful overall in the first 100 days. There are three things that affect every character, including NPCs. These will grow as you fight, train, read, or play. These you get to choose. These are randomly selected for you and some really suck. If you want to find out what your character's stats are, click on the radio and then set up expedition. This pauses the game and allows you some time to look over all your characters. And you can see at the bottom left where your good and bad traits are. Every character has them, including the people you allow into your shelter. The horse has to eat three food every day, and it's easy to tell when he needs to be fed because he starts making noises. Just click on him and select feed. He does not require food when on an expedition, so keep him busy. You can see the water required for an expedition. Walking is the default. There is a huge difference in water uses between the horse and no horse. The van is nice but requires fuel and is difficult to get working until later. One of the big benefits of the horse is the saddle. It's in tier two at the bottom. After it's made, it will disappear from the build menu. It allows for an extra 12 carry spots. You have to equip the saddle by clicking on the horse then clicking saddle horse for it to take effect. Make sure your horse is fed before an expedition. Never help your characters unless a need is read. I have the boy wearing the hazmat suit for the whole game because he handles everything outside. The traits of people you find on expeditions suck. Never accept them. The people who approach your shelter are much, much better. Roughly around day 20 is when you're going to accept your first guest. The second guest, around day 40 when your first guest is finally loyal. Rebar is the choice for fighting. A good loadout looks like this. Metal detector finds stuff. Lockpick also finds stuff. Bring a tent if you want, but don't forget the bullets for the gun. Also remember a gun can be used as a club. Whenever you go out, always select Bully, if you have the choice. Then, Subdue. Subdue is normally a one-shot fight ender, and you get to take all their stuff without the trauma of killing. Subdue, 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 Subdue. No trading. Just take that expensive stuff. Even the animals can be subdued. Cool thing is, you get meat and leather from them. I guess they carry it around in their pockets. Bad dog. This is one reason why you want the fighter character. Subdue rocks, no trauma. Firing a full clip is different for each gun. The shotgun shoots off six rounds. So the rifle shoots off three. Remember to train your people. The heavy bag grows the strength and dexterity skills, which are good for fighting. The bookcase grows your intelligence, charisma, and perception, which helps you find more stuff. Kids can't use the bookcase, so they have to use the toy box, which gives them basically the same thing. Never, ever, ever press the you handle it button. I lost people with maxed out skills and all their stuff, and this causes trauma to everyone back in the shelter. Traps and snares. The sound of meat and leather. Each animal provides different amounts of stuff with the higher tier traps giving you more of what the animal's max is. You must have a fridge to get anything from the traps, even the leather. If your fridges are maxed out, don't feel bad about leaving the animals tied up. They won't go bad. There are tier one, tier two, and tier three traps. The higher tier traps give more stuff and have more uses before they disappear. Kids cannot harvest dead people for meat. Only adults can. And he'll carry that to the fridge, cut them up, and get a nice bit of trauma for his troubles. But at least you won't have to waste your inventory on a grave. Cool thing is that desperate meat can be traded off and has a pretty high trade value. I guess long pig is valuable in the wastelands. Don't forget to upgrade your radio station and keep someone on there broadcasting for trades. 
Recycling is the second best way to get the stuff you need. You can ditch all kinds of stuff and get the components it's made from. The only problem is you need the recycling machine and it's expensive to build. And each time you recycle it takes a lot of in-game time to finish. You also have to collect the recycling after it's done. Raids are rare and don't show up until around day 50 normally. Be sure to hide at least one family member in the wall. Each hiding spot is only good for one person. Then arm your traps. It helps to have the items necessary to arm a trap, say bullets and tripwires. Tripwires are in tier one. There is a good chance the attackers will get tired and go away, but that chance drops as time goes on. Greeting them with some auto guns is a reliable way to get some of that sweet, desperate meat. Auto guns are only limited by the ammo in your inventory. If you are forced to trade, trade something of equal value, even the same thing. It still gives you a bump in your charisma. In your travels, you might run into the mystery hatch. There is a really nice gun inside, that's it. It will have a code for you to enter to get the gun, and the only way to get the code is to have the fish as a pet and count the bubbles. It's not really worth having the fish just for this. The horse is better overall. This is how your shelter should look after the first few days. Shove all the important things over to the left and get two sleeping bags as soon as possible and start maxing out your water storage. Water is everything at the start. It's for drinking, showering, toilet, and it's your money for trade and your fuel for travel. Whenever people come back from a mission, or if you haven't paid attention to your people for a while, they will have red stats. The most important of these is the shower stat. You have to handle that first. Never eat before showering. This can lead to the fun that is food poisoning. Just like in real life, it sucks. Take some antibiotics or use a first aid pack to cure it. It will still take a day or two for it to run its course, and you'll need to follow that person around with a mop or the flies and rats will show up. If you have an incinerator, click incinerate and you can start dumping stuff in there. Coal, of course, burns the longest, and there is no end to how much you can burn. So you're switching from the generator to the incinerator to power your shelter. Whenever the incinerator is in use, the generator will have zero daily use. It also acts as an easy form of body disposal if you are squeamish about selling off their meat. You can do this with no trauma added to your character and it does give a small amount of fuel for your incinerator. For me, this game is about the first 100 days. After that, it's too easy. I don't see how anyone can play this for 2,000 days. Two billion days? Come on, dude, really?